But all in all, we can thank God because he brought us through safely. Would somebody say amen? Amen. Today, it's my privilege to talk to God's people on the topic, the good, the bad, and the humble. Bow your hands with me as I pray. Loving God, we are so happy for the privilege you have given to us to share in your work. The great God, we are not worthy, but we know that you are worthy. We don't have all the power, but we know that you have the power. The great God, as we are here today worshiping you, we ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. Help, great God, that we receive a message directly from your throne. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The, the instrument I'm using today, I'm not able to see you, but you can see me. So the only way I can know that you are there is if I hear you. Would somebody say amen? Amen. Somehow, amen. I didn't hear that. Praise God. So that's how I know that you're there. Okay. Uh, I don't want to that I'm preaching to a phone. You know, we, we, we talk to, we, we, we serve a real great God. The good, the bad, and the humble. You know, uh, my first car that I had many years ago was a 1974 red Volkswagen Bug. Yeah, I was traveling from St. Anne to the conference office in Spanish Town, the SDA conference office in Spanish Town. As I attempted to turn the car to cross the flat bridge in the gorge, the Magua Gorge, many of you know about that bridge I'm talking about. I noticed that the steering of the vehicle was turning in my hands and the car was not turning. Mm. The car was going straight. I had to immediately stop because if I did not put my foot on the brake, the vehicle would have gone straight over into the river. Okay. You know what may have taken place as a result of me going over in the river. Right there, I realized that the steering was broken. The steering rod was broken, and I had to, little by little, try to feel a grip. And when I felt that grip, I little by little turned it and went over and crossed the bridge into Spanish Dam. I learned a few things that day. No matter how good the driver is, if the steering wheel is not connected to the vehicle, there will be no turning. <laughs> when we realize that there is no connection, then we need to stop and check what the problem is. God is the driver. Amen. And if he is going to drive, then we need the steering to be connected to the vehicle for him to drive it. Amen. If we are not connected to God, then I want us to understand that we are not safe. <laughs> the Bible tells us in Psalms 91, reading verse 1 through to verse 2, the Bible says, He who dwells in the secret place of the 
most high shall abide on the shadow of the Almighty. Almighty. Amen. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. I want us to understand that as a people, we need constantly to trust God. I know that if there was a year in our life that we prayed, it must have been 2020. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. If there was a year that we prayed, it had to be 2020. Many of us, we had to interact with persons who had the virus. Many of us, we had colleagues that we were interacting with who had the virus. Yes. I want us to understand that we as a people need to spend time in the secret place with God in prayer. Mm -hmm. In solitude, silence, soaking in the scripture, in meditation. Yes. We are transformed into the image of God as we spend time getting to know who he is. Amen. Getting into a full relationship with him. The Bible says that abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears what? Much fruit. Yes. For without me, you can do nothing. We serve a great big wonderful God. The first thing as Christians we need is prayer. Huh. We need as Christians to spend time in prayer. Today is the second year, second day of 2021. And we prayed a lot in 2020. And I want us to understand that we need to pray even more in 2021 because we are closer to the coming of Jesus Christ and the devil is going to be increasing his forces and he's going to be increasing his attacks and God's people need to be connected to God. God's people need to be under the blood protection of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible tells us in St. John chapter 15, read in verse 5. Says, I am the vine, he are the branches. He that abide in me, and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me he can do nothing. Yes. In chapter 4, read in verse 31. And 32 says, let all bitterness and, and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. We serve a great big wonderful God. We are in a new year. We need to put the old one behind us. Only as we forgive others. Only as we forgive others and forgive ourselves. Can we have a happy new year? Yes, sir. So I want to talk to you today on the second day, January 2021 on the subject, 
for good, but bad, and the other one. The good, the bad, and the humble. But in order to make 2021 better than 2020, we must first take peace and make peace with our past and the relationships that have been broken through unforgiveness. In 2021, we hope that Jesus will come. 2020 was an extraordinary year. We experienced many, many persons experienced despair and pain. Others felt hope and warmth. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic swept across the world, taking countless lives, you know, I lost one of my patients to COVID in 2020. Actually, one of the first persons to have died in the Department of Correction as an inmate. So I know that COVID has taken a bit of person. I've lost a co-worker who was a nurse practitioner for psychiatry. He died because of COVID. Under such circumstances, we also witness the strength of unity and the power of God. We started to see the song that we have sung for many years becoming I become alive right before our eyes. I don't know if while the pandemic was going on, if you remember the song, The King is Coming. I guess you remember the song. The songwriter said, it's all oh, the king is coming. The king is coming. I can hear the trumpet sounding, and now his face I see. Oh, the king is coming. The king is coming. Praise God, he's coming for me. Praise God, he's coming for me. This is the verse that actually captivates my mind. And as I, uh, you know, look at what. Praise is in the last verse. It says, the marketplace is empty. Mm -hmm. to 2020. No more traffic in the no street. More. All the builders' tools are silent. No more time for harvest reap wheat. Busy housewife cease their labors yes. in the room no debate work on hurt is all suspended as the king comes through the gates come on now i wanted to understand when i saw what was happening when i look to the back of my yard and i looked over on the road and i saw that it was empty when I go out on the street and I look on the, the road, I saw the roads were empty. Persons who were trade men were not taking any jobs. The offices that passed permits and other things for persons to build, all those offices were closed. And I want us to understand. It felt like Jesus was coming. All right. Uh, are you listening to me? And I'm Man. sure. He never changed his mind. He is still coming. Are you listening to me? Thank God that because of Jesus Christ and the fact that he is reaching out to us with his love, whatever has happened to us 
in the past can be put behind us. And today, I want to talk to you about an absolute must if we are to recover and go on to become all that God wants us to be. Amen. I want to talk about restoring broken relationships. All right. Are you listening to me? Amen. Which is good. That is good. If someone happened, if something happened to you in your youth and in your past or in some other relationships and it continues to hurt you in your heart, then that resentment, that hurt, that brokenness is in control of your lives. Mm -hmm. And I want us to understand it is on your back. And mm -hmm. it, it is like a heavy burden that weighs you down. But thank God the Bible talks about how to get yesterday off your backs. All right. To look at what God's word has to say. Let's look at unity and maturity in the body of Christ. Amen. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, reading verse 1 to verse 6, he says, as a prisoner for, for the Lord, then I heard you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Mm -hmm. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Verse 3 says, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one home when you were called. Verse 5 says, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and the Father of all, who Amen. is over all and through all and in all. I want us to understand that we serve a great big wonderful God. The Bible tells the chapter 4, read verse 31, 2 to verse 32. Paul talks about getting yesterday off your back. And what a word that this is to us about recovery. The Bible tells us in verse 31, the Bible says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger brawling and slander, along with every form of malice, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Ephesians chapter four, reading verse 31 and verse 32. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of Psalms 100, reading verse 5, the Bible says, the Lord is good. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? Yeah. Are you, the Bible says, the Lord is good. His mm -hmm. mercy is everlasting. everlasting. His truth endured to all generations. I want us to understand when I'm talking about the good, I'm talking about God. God kept us Amen. safe in 2021. Yeah. 2020. God kept our family safe in 2020. God is good. God yes. allowed us to have shelter, food. Amen. God gave us everything we needed in 2020. 
how we must praise God. Mm -hmm. Because God is good. Some of the bad things, I'm not going to spend much time to talk about the bad today. But some of the bad things that took place is really serious in 20. Um, 20. We had COVID-19. And it was bad, right? And it still is bad. In 2020, we had racism. And that was bad. And it's still bad. We want us as a people to understand that God has promised in his word that he's going to protect us in bad times. Mm -hmm. He said in Daniel that in a time of trouble, Michael shall stand up for his people. Amen. One should always prepare for the worst, it is said, and hope for the best. The president didn't do that. I know all America is paying the price. A lot of bad things took place in 2020. But I want us to understand that the good God was still alive in 2020. Are you listening to me? We serve a great, wonderful God. Now let me go to the scripture reading that was, was read. The scripture reading that was read. Very interesting scripture come from Matthew chapter 9. Yes. Reading verse 10 to 13. The Bible says that while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sick came and ate with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees, when who? When the Pharisees, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Or here, or on hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who needs a doctor, who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. The Bible says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but mm -hmm. sinners. You see, Jesus was in the house. All right. Matthew. You know, Mark and Luke account of the story calls him Levi. And it appears as if Matthew doesn't even didn't, didn't use the name Levi, you know, much. He was referred to as, as Matthew. And, and somehow Jesus being a humble leader. And you know, Jesus being a humble leader went into the house of Matthew, the tax collector, and he was there with other sinners. Mm -hmm. And the father was wondering why Jesus was there. But I wanted to know that it's why Jesus was in Matthew's house that Jairus came and told him that his daughter was dead. You read mm -hmm. the story, right? It was while Jesus was heading from Jairus, uh, from the uh, Matthew's house to, to Jairus' house that in the woman with the issue of blood touched his garment and that woman was here. Are you listening to me? I want us to understand as a people in 20, 
21, as Jesus was willing to be able, Jesus was willing to mix with sinners in order to win them. Jesus was willing to reach out to those who were in need in order to save them. And so people, members of the family of Christ in 2021, we need to emulate the humble Jesus. Amen. I want us to understand that Jesus came to this earth. He was the good God. He came to get rid of everything that is bad. And ultimately, he died on the cross so that you and I can have a part into his kingdom. He humbled himself and he went to the cross so that you and I may have life and may have it more abundantly. He went to the cross that you don't have to die. I don't have to die because he died for us so that we can have life everlasting. And I'm so happy he said, Isaiah, he said, come. And let us reason together. He says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be as crimson, they shall be as wool. I want us to understand that we serve a great, big, wonderful God. A God whom we can put our trust in. A God who says, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. The God that took the children of Israel from Egypt to Canaan's land can take us from this evil world into the heavenly Canaan land. Will somebody say amen? We serve a great, big, wonderful God, a God whom we can trust, a God who we can hold on to. I want you to understand if God says it, you can take it to the bank because it's good enough. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. And church, if there's a time that we need to hold on to the good, that time is now. If there's a time that we need to put aside the bad, that time is now. And if there's a time that we need to humble ourselves as Jesus humbled himself so that he went even to death for our sins. You know, he says in his words, that if we try to save our own lives, we'll lose it. But if we lose our life for his sake, we'll find it. I want you to understand, serve a great big wonderful God. He says he's able, he's able. I want us to understand that he tells us in his words, he says in Matthew, Come to me, all he who labor and are heavy laden. You know, many of us in 2020, many of us wondered if God was still alive. But I heard a governor on a TV was saying that we are experiencing this, but this has nothing to do with God. That's craziness. Because anywhere there is success, God is involved. There is no success that is lasting without God. The Bible says, come to me all ye who labors and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden like church. I wanted to understand that we need to come to Jesus. We need to take coronavirus to Jesus because he says he will deal with that. We need to take low financial situation to Jesus, family problems, we need to take it to Jesus. Whatever the situation is, we need to take it to Jesus because Jesus is able and Jesus is available. The psalmist says I was young 
Now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I receive bread in bread. Jesus is able. Jesus is good. The devil is bad. And Jesus is our humble leader. Let us emulate him. Let us allow him to be our friend. Let us allow him to be our guides. Bow your heads with me as I pray. Great God, we thank you for who you are. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your leading. Great God, continue to be with the Coconut Grove family. Continue to let the church grow day by day. Great God, continue to bless them with their building. Bless them with finances. Bless them with unity. Bless them with family togetherness. And great God, bless each and every one of us into your kingdom. Help us to lay aside the things that so easily beset us. Help us to hold on to you, trust you, so that you can make us into what you want us to be. Forgive us all our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Coven and Coven and Grove. I told you, no, the moderator.